So the zeolites that are found in nature are found in uncontrolled environments. It, ha it may be that there's a particular place that has beautiful zeolites and sitting right next to it is a toxic chemical factory. And so then that zeolite, even though if it were clean, would be perfect because it's now picked up bad things from its neighbors that weren't there um, millions of years ago now becomes not so good and so then you have to w work at it to remove all the toxic materials and the problem with removing all the toxic materials is that you have to use harsh chemistries to, in order to do that again just like the analogy with your water softener if you're removing only calcium and magnesium salt is a perfect way of dislodging those things but if you're trying to remove arsenic and mercury and other radioactive heavy metals salt is not going to be enough and you're going to have to use harsh chemicals harsh chemicals will then disrupt the structure of the zeolite and so now your zeolite is not as good as it was in its original state because some of those pores those holes that are important for capturing heavy metals may collapse yep. they may block off areas and so the parts that are still working may still be working fine but now you've maybe cut down the efficiency of that piece of zeolite by 50%, and so you're not getting the same bang for your buck. Yeah, and the, the fact that science has been able to imitate exactly, mm -hmm. imitate exactly the structure of zeolite, and to do it without the contamination that exists in nature is really a step forward. It's a slow precipitation of the elements that are naturally found in nature, except that it's done in a clean environment, that has no chance of being contaminated by any bad metals, by any other undesirable elements. It's done in a hygienic way so that there is no microbial contamination and no uh, fungal contamination. These are all things that you can't control in nature. So even though nature was the first chemist to, to make the magical zeolite as wonderful as it is, it didn't control its laboratory because its laboratory is the entire world and we can't and it couldn't control it. But we can do that in the in the laboratory now and that's part of the reason why I got excited about nanotechnology in the first place is because if you understand how nature makes these things, you realize how wonderful and precise it is and you can see which parts of that process are adulterated in nature because there's contaminants that nature's not controlling and if you just remove them in your laboratory conditions it's still nature making the material it's just not making it out in the dirty environment it's making it well, in a nice clean place <laughs> that's, and so it's a great idea <laughs> and, and, and so it's not really synthetic in the bad sense where synthetic is some sort of evil concoction that right. doesn't exist in nature we're just recreating nature's processes in a nice way in a clean way so that we get the maximum benefit out of this natural product without having to go through all the effort of cleaning out nature's mistakes. What an explanation. <laughs> that is just incredible, Agnes. Thank you.